Hey everyone, we are Dana and Mike, and this is our two-week guide on how to camper van in the beautiful country of Ireland. We're gonna go over our day-to-day -day itinerary, everything that we did and saw, and give you guys all the tips and tricks that you need to tackle the roads in this amazing European country. Ireland is full of absolutely stunning landscapes and things to do, and seeing it all in a camper van is the best way to experience everything it has to offer. Now, this was our first ever experience with a camper van, and there were a lot of lessons that we learned along the way. So we hope that this video helps you plan your next adventure to the legendary Emerald Isle. Don't forget to like and subscribe! So, if your first day was anything like ours, it will mainly be arriving in Ireland and picking up your camper van. We landed in Dublin International Airport at around 8 a.m., which would normally be great in any trip since that means you get the whole day. But one thing to keep in mind is that most camper van places don't allow you to pick up your van until mid-afternoon, usually sometime around 2 to 4 p.m., depending on the company. So we did have some time to kill. We first picked up a SIM card at the airport so we could get cell data. Vodafone is generally considered to be the best choice. We managed to contact the rental company and they allowed us to come early and pick up our van at around noon. So we hopped in a cab and got going. The company we rented from is called West Coast Camper Vans and the cost was 2,570 euros for 13 nights. The van that we rented is a Weinsberg 600 MQ. It can seat four people, has a bed, kitchen, a full wet bath with shower and toilet. We have a whole other video giving an in-depth tour on this van that I'll link in the corner here. So they showed us how to operate all the different systems in the van and took us on a test drive to make sure we were okay getting used to the roads and driving conditions. Since we're from Canada, we're used to driving on the right side of the road and having our steering wheel on the left side of the vehicle. In Ireland and pretty much everywhere else in Europe, it's the exact opposite with the steering wheel on the right side of the vehicle and you have to drive on the left side of the road. This did take some getting used to. You kind of have to retrain some of your muscle memory on how to drive, but you get used to it, trust me. In Ireland, if you're near the big major cities and driving on the main highways, you're going to be on multi-lane roads that are super easy to drive. However, if you're anywhere that is more rural, then generally you're going to be dealing with a lot of single lane roads that are more difficult to navigate and you'll often come head on with another vehicle and you'll both have to slowly worm your way around each other. But don't worry, everyone was always super friendly. There was never any problems. Now, when it comes to parking, it did help a lot to have another person that could either look out the back of the window for the driver or in most cases, just hop out and guide the driver in. However, I'm not gonna lie, I did definitely have to do a billion three-point turns in some cases, but you gotta do what you gotta do. We did it. <laughs> If this is your first time in Ireland, then you're going to want to drive the famous Wild Atlantic Way. This is a 2,500 kilometer drive that takes you along the beautiful western coast of Ireland. From Dublin, you can either drive around the country clockwise or counterclockwise. We suggest driving clockwise. Since you'll be on the left side of the road, driving the country clockwise will give you a better view out of your window on the west coast. Anyways, back to day one. Our first goal was to buy groceries. We left Dublin to a smaller town called Bray because it would be easier to park the van. One of the best parts about having a camper van is that you can cook your meals anywhere you are. So fill up on your favorites. We continued our drive towards the west coast. However, it was already starting to get late on our first day and we needed to find a campsite for the night. Speaking of finding a campsite, the app that we used the most while road tripping around Ireland was park for night This is a great app for finding campsites, both paid and free, as well as things like water and dump stations. More on that later. All in all, this app is a great resource for your van life adventures while driving around the island. We drove for a few hours and ended up at a free campsite for the night near County Wicklow. It's freezing! <laughs> was a beautiful pull out by the road and across the street was our first picturesque landscape of Ireland. We were way too lazy to cook any food so we dug into a couple pre-made sandwiches we got from Lidl. Day one in Ireland, success! Okay, day two. Still fighting jet lag, we woke up and hit the road. 
Our goal today was to keep heading west towards County Cork and get to the beginning of the Wild Atlantic Way. If you want a more in-depth look at our trip, you can check out our vlogs from the Ireland series. This video is more to just to give you some quick info on how we spent the two weeks here. Once we arrived in Cork, we fueled up and were surprised to find that most gas stations in Ireland, especially Circle K gas stations, have free water that you can fill up your van with. This made it really easy to stay topped up while we were road tripping around the country. Speaking of gas stations, a lot of them also have 24-hour laundry machines that you can use. We found these to be incredibly useful. Why don't all places have this? Next, we decided that we wanted to try the shower for the first time in the van, which actually didn't go great. The water pressure was really terrible for some reason, but we made do. While we're on the topic of the washroom, we did have a cassette toilet in this van, which means that once every three days or so, we had to physically take out the waste container and empty it at designated sites. This is our first experience with the cassette toilet, and actually it was a lot less gross than I thought it would be. You put a chemical inside the toilet when you first set it up, and it breaks everything down, and you just flush it all away. You can do this at campgrounds that you're staying at, and some towns even have designated dump sites for your gray and black water that can be used by the public. We continued driving until we hit the west coast and saw signs noting the start of the Wild Atlantic Way. The real journey was about to begin. We ended up finding this amazing campsite near Galley Head Lighthouse. We found this site using the Park for Night app and it was probably one of the best campsites that we had during our whole time in Ireland. Oh my god, you guys! Look at the view from our bedroom! Voila! The waves of the Atlantic Ocean crashing on the cliffside was stunning, and we felt so lucky to be able to camp somewhere like this. Truly a great start to our journey. The next day, we got back on the road and started moving up the west coast. This was the first day we were actually going to spend sightseeing, as we had basically spent the first couple days getting the van and driving to the start of the Wild Atlantic Way. Our goal for today was to visit four landmarks in County Cork. We'll be seeing the Baltimore Beacon, Browhead, Misenhead Bridge, and Three Castle Head. The first spot is called Baltimore Beacon, which is a white stone painted beacon sitting in the harbor of Baltimore. It's part of a series of lighthouses and beacons scattered throughout Ireland, which serve as a coastline warning system for ships. Our second location is Browhead, which is a picturesque cliff edge and rock formation at the most southerly point of the Irish mainland. Careful, it gets really windy here and the trail is narrow with steep drop-offs, but the views are worth it. We then moved on to Misenhead Bridge, which you have to pay a fee to get into, but it provided great views of the surrounding cliffs and ocean and had a gift shop and even a small cafe where we got lunch. Our last stop of the day was at Three Castle Head, an ancient castle ruin that is simultaneously at the edge of a cliff, at the shores of a lake, as well as next to the ocean. This was truly beautiful, a great way to end day three. We found a campsite for the night, which was actually at a hotel parking lot, believe it or not. The West Lodge Hotel, located in Bantry, actually has a dedicated lot for motorhomes and a dump station. They also allowed you to use their leisure center, so we were able to grab a shower before moving on. The next day, our plan was to visit our last stop in County Cork, a beautiful beach that we had driven by the day before, but we didn't have time to stop at. And then after that, we're gonna make our way into County Kerry and drive what's known as the Ring of Kerry. We've given ourselves three days to explore this area. And the main things that we wanna see here are the Urog Stone Circle, Bally Carberry Castle, Cahirigal Stone Fort, the Fogger Cliffs, and the Skellig Islands. There were other attractions that we were hoping to see, such as hiking the tallest peak of Ireland called Cairn Tool, but due to the weather and foggy conditions, we had to bail on that. Speaking of weather, we actually had quite a bit of rain during our trip here. We learned that this is just something that you have to accept while traveling in Ireland. The weather changes constantly, and even in the middle of summer when we went, you can still get unlucky. So plan accordingly and bring your rain gear. So, our first stop of the day was Barley Cove Beach. This beach was actually created by a tsunami from an earthquake that happened in Lisbon during the 1700s. We had breakfast here before getting back on the road because we had a long drive ahead of us. A few hours later, we arrived at the Urog Stone Circle. Careful, the road is a bit rough coming in, so take it slow. This stunning rock formation is situated in a beautiful valley that looks straight out of a movie. 
We were in awe just looking at it, and there was even a waterfall in the far distance to see. There's an old legend that within these rocks is a portal to another world, and people often come here to meditate and claim to feel an otherworldly presence. We thought that was really interesting. Back on the road, we continued around the Ring of Kerry and drove through Killarney National Park. Although we only drove through it and didn't explore it, we could tell that this park was beautiful, and if you have time, maybe do a hike or two. Right beside a castle. We eventually ended up at our campsite for the evening, which is located right next to a castle. Valley Carberry Castle, situated right on the water, was built in the 16th century to the wealthy McCarthy clan. You used to be able to walk right up to the castle, but in 2017, it was closed off to foot traffic to preserve the ruins. Luckily, you can still get a great view and park up right beside it. Good night to day four. The next day, we woke up to some rain and fog, so we canceled the hike to Karen Tool that we had planned. Instead, we started off by getting some laundry done and finding a nice lunch spot called the Lobster Bar in Waterville. The beef Guinness stew here was awesome. Next, we drove to the Geocon Mountain on Valentia Island to see the Fogger Cliffs. The weather here might have been cloudy and foggy, but it made for some moody drone footage, so that was a nice plus. These cliffs are about 180 meters in height and fall vertically into the Atlantic Ocean. Afterwards, we went to a nearby chocolate factory called Skellig's Chocolate. These famous handmade treats are created here on site with a bunch of different varieties. We were given a quick tour and tasted a bunch of samples. These are delicious and you should definitely check it out. The best one we thought was the honeycomb milk chocolate, and I really wish we had bought more of them. We ended today's adventures at the Cahergal Stone Ring Fort. Built sometime between the 8th and 9th century, this ancient stone structure has stood the test of time. It's interesting to note that this wasn't actually a defensive fort, but was likely home to a tribal group. They would build their homes within these walls, and the remaining stone structure in the middle would have housed the king or leader. We finally arrived at our campsite for the evening. It was definitely a long day and we were glad to get some sleep. Good night, day five. Okay, day six. This was a fun one. We went on a boat tour of the famous Skellig Islands. Located off the southwestern coast of Ireland, these uninhabited rocky islands are small but impressive to see. Skellig means splinter of stone in Old Irish, and we were in awe of the sheer cliff faces and sharp jagged rocks in front of us. The first island is called Skellig Michael. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and was home to monks in the 13th century. The second island is called Little Skellig, and while humans have never lived here, it is home to over 50,000 seabirds. Both these islands were just stunning and we highly recommend doing this tour if you can. After the tour, we hopped back on the road. We were now finished with the Ring of Kerry and headed north. The next area that we're exploring is called the Dingle Peninsula. We will be spending the next two days here and the places that we're hoping to visit are Inch Beach, Dunmore Head, Dunquin Harbor, and Clogger Head. Afterwards, we will drive further north to County Clare where we'll end the two days at the legendary Cliffs of Mower. First, we got lunch since we were starving after the boat tour. We went to Bunker's Bar in Kalorglin and filled our bellies before driving to our campsite for the evening, which was located at Inch Beach. That was a lot of driving today, but we have even more tomorrow, so it was time to sleep and say goodnight to day six. On day seven, we began driving and exploring the Dingle Peninsula. The weather was looking nice today and we were hoping for a break from all the rain that we've been having. First stop is at Dunmore Head, which is a group of islands just off the coast. Incredibly picturesque and was also featured in Star Wars, same as the Skellig Islands yesterday. This is one of the most westerly points in Europe and is a beautiful piece of Ireland that remains untouched. A great way to start our day. Next, we visited Dunquin Harbour, which was just down the road. It provided similar type views to Dunmore Head, but it was a little more built up with a path that led down to the shore. There was also a little coffee stand if you needed a snack. Afterwards, we stopped at Cloggerhead Viewpoint, which gave us a panoramic view of the mountains and beaches nearby. 
The sky opened up and the sun finally came out and we were mesmerized by the stunning landscapes in front of us. We couldn't stop for long though, as now we had a four hour drive ahead of us. Our end goal for today was to go see the Cliffs of Moher, and we wanted to arrive late in the afternoon in order to see it because there would be minimal crowds and that's when all the tour buses leave. And wow, did this place not disappoint. The Cliffs of Moher are a stunning set of cliffs reaching heights of over 214 meters. This is Ireland's most famous tourist attraction, receiving over 1 million visitors a year. But it is large enough that it's easy to find your own spot to enjoy the views. These gorgeous cliffs stretch out into the ocean and it was definitely worth the long drive that it took to get here. We found a nearby park up to spend the night. It was located right next to the ocean, which was great. We were both exhausted as it had been a long day of driving and exploring, so we were happy to finally get some sleep. Here's to a successful day seven. All right, back on the road. We're continuing the drive on the Wild Atlantic Way through County Galway and County Mayo. Our goals for days 8 and 9 are to see Astley Falls, Silver Strand Beach, Bertra Beach, and Keel Beach. We were hoping to do a hike to Keel Head, which is quite popular in this area, but that was cancelled due to, you guessed it, more rain and fog which would have resulted in no views. No worries though, we adjusted our schedule and moved forward. Day 8 was actually supposed to be pretty uneventful and mostly just driving, but we had a scare with our drone where it suddenly went from 100% battery to 0% battery and it crashed in a field. Luckily, it was still within walking distance and we managed to retrieve it, but that was a close call. On day 9, our first stop in County Mayo was Astley Falls. This is a small but impressive waterfall on the Arif River. We were able to walk right up to it to see it up close, and bonus points because we were the only ones there. We've gotten lucky a few times on this trip with that happening. We spent the afternoon beach hopping and visited three beautiful oceanside locations. First was called Silver Strand Beach, which felt incredibly remote and isolated, and it was surrounded by beautiful mountains and islands. We took a walk on the shore and stared out into the Atlantic Ocean. The second was Bertra Beach, which is uniquely beautiful because of its sand dune that stretches far out into the water. The beauty of Ireland just continues to impress us. The last beach of the day was Keel Beach, which is a massive three and a half kilometer stretch of sand surrounded by incredible cliffs. This is honestly the highlight of our day and the sky opened up and we watched the sun go down. Our campsite was also conveniently located right next to this beach and we said goodnight to our ninth day on this camper van adventure. On our 10th day in Ireland, we were coming up towards the end of the Wild Atlantic Way. We were now about to leave County Mayo and start the last section of the drive in County Donegal. Over the next two days, we were hoping to see Roserk Friary, the Devil's Chimney, a secret waterfall in Donegal, Sleeve League, which didn't work out due to fog, Croy Head Sea Arch, and finally, Bunbag Shipwreck. We began by going to Roserk Friary, built in 1460 for a group of friars practicing the Franciscan lifestyle. This is one of the most well-preserved monasteries in all of Ireland. It's open to the public to see and we were able to walk around the ancient stone hallways and staircases. The friary was burnt down in 1590 during Elizabeth I's reign when all Catholic monasteries were banned. What remains is the national monument we see today. Feeling hungry, we stopped in County Sligo and had lunch at Hooked. We loved the style and design of this eclectic restaurant with their interesting and clever decor, and we also liked that all their ingredients are locally sourced. Also, their mini donuts were amazing. We finished off our day by visiting the tallest waterfall in Ireland called the Devil's Chimney, while also experiencing the heaviest rainfall during our stay here. That didn't dampen our spirits though, and it was a short hike to the viewpoint where we could get a closer look. Day 11. Only a few days left on this trip. We had found a park up in County Donegal to spend the night, and we were up super early at 5.30 a.m. because we heard there was a secret waterfall nearby that you can only see if it's low tide. 
We walked down to the water and followed the shore up. The rocks are super slippery here, so be careful. It took a bit of traversing, but it wasn't long before we found a cave that led us to the hidden waterfall. We were in for an incredible sight, and this is truly a hidden gem you must see. We've made it to the secret waterfall. We got back on the road and what looked to be nice weather was actually a trick because by the time we got to our destination called Sleeve League, it looked like this. As per usual, as you can see, you can see nothing. You can see nothing. <laughs> what was supposed to be the second tallest cliffs in Ireland ended up being a cloud of fog. Hopefully you have more luck when you go. Things worked out better at our next location, Croyhead Sea Arch. These stunning rock formations are truly unique with the largest one being just over 150 feet tall. Wow. <laughs> <Holy cow. laughs> While we might have missed out on the previous location, seeing this sea arch definitely made up for it. Our final destination for the day was the shipwreck at Bunbeg Beach. Karanamara is a fishing vessel that was brought to this beach for repairs in 1977, which somehow never got done and was forgotten about. The ship is now a landmark here in Donegal and people come from all over to see it. That closes out day 11 for us. So we're winding down on the last three days here in Ireland. We've said goodbye to the wild Atlantic way and the plan today is to actually leave Ireland and go to Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK actually. Our plans are to see Downhill Beach, Magera Cross and Dunluce Castle, the Giant's Causeway and the Gobbins Footpath. We'll camp in Belfast the night before we have to return the van and we'll spend our last day in Dublin before we head back home. Our first and only stop for day 12 was Downhill Beach, located in County Antrim. This amazing beach is huge and the best part is you're allowed to camp here absolutely free. We saw many other campers in the area and enjoyed a day listening to the sound of the waves and walking on the sand. There was also a monastery in the far distance that they filmed Game of Thrones at. Not a bad way to get introduced to Northern Ireland. Day 13. This would be the only day we get to explore Northern Ireland, so we had to make the most of it. We got up early and our first stop was Magara Cross and Dunluce Castle. Magara Cross viewpoint gave us an amazing look at the surrounding cliffs and oceans. Funny how even after two weeks we're still not sick of cliffs. On the other side was Dunluce Castle, which is a ruin dating back to the 16th century. Our second location and highlight of our day was visiting the Giant's Causeway. This incredible display of nature is made up of 40,000 interlocking basalt columns that formed naturally due to an ancient volcanic eruption. It was crazy to see all these geometric shapes and we were in awe at the stunning beauty of it all. You're gonna definitely wanna get to this attraction early in the day because it gets busy fast. We continued our drive along the Causeway Coastal Route and decided to get lunch at a restaurant called Brooklyn Bay Diner in the town of Larn. This is an American style diner that specializes in burgers. Delicious. Afterwards, and needing to work off the calories we just ate, we arrived at the last adventure of the day, the Gobbins Footpath. This is a coastal edge walk located in Larne and was a beautiful way to spend a few hours. We were taken on a guided tour along the cliff's edge through uniquely constructed bridges as well as a seabird haven and down into dark caves. It was a lot of fun and we highly recommend this tour if you're coming to Northern Ireland. We arrived in Belfast next as well as our final campsite for the trip. A bittersweet moment as we looked back on our whole trip and all the amazing things that we had seen and done. We would be returning the van tomorrow, but would have the remainder of the day to explore Dublin before we headed home. Day 14. 
our final day in Ireland. We had seen so much on this trip and felt so lucky that we were able to experience it all. We drove back into Dublin to return our camper van back where it all started. After dropping the van, we caught a cab into town to our hotel for the night called Trinity City Hotel. This hotel was centrally located and had cool Victorian-esque styling. After two weeks in a van, having a whole hotel room felt like luxury. We dropped our bags upstairs and immediately went back outside to hit the streets. We only had the afternoon to explore Dublin, so we wanted to make the most of it. We walked all over downtown and saw sites such as Trinity College, Haypenny Bridge, Temple Bar, and various churches and cathedrals. The energy of the busy city is always fun to be a part of and we were happy to experience a bit of it before heading home. Our journey across Ireland has come to an end and we are so amazed at everything we saw during this trip. From the absolutely breathtaking cliff sides, the ocean views, the castle ruins, rolling green hills and mountain vistas, Ireland is a natural wonder and exploring it in a camper van was the best way to see everything it has to offer. Thanks for watching everyone. See you on the next adventure.